Welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast for I and you. I am your host, Caleb Schweiss. And I am you. You are you. <laughs> That's, <laughs> that I know. You are you, I am I. <laughs> I am Joe. Yeah, and today, guys, we are going to be reviewing the hit anime series Final Fantasy Unlimited. So, we just barely binged through the last, like, what, five hours half. of it? <laughs> last half of the show, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like we were doing it as commentaries for a long time, and then it was like, we need to do the review at least. Yeah. And, you know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll, we'll uh, retrofit some commentaries later on when we get, like, a, a lost weekend or something. We could. But, uh... You know, we're just about to finish the final game, and I, I didn't, I really wanted the last thing that we reviewed to be the game, and not the television show that we like slowly watched over time. <laughs> Although, so, which one? Which one do you prefer? That's the question. Um, that is a good question. I, yeah, that's I agree. What I'll say about that. <laughs> <laughs> It's a really good question. Uh, there are a lot, or excuse me, there's there's a couple major similarities between the two, which I would love to discuss when we discuss World of Final Fantasy, but I feel like you need to be further in that game before uh, before that can be talked about. But um, yeah, finished Final, uh, Final Fantasy Unlimited last night, and you finished it today, didn't you? Yeah, I uh, so I was gonna do it yesterday, but then I caught myself. I just had to restart an episode like four times because I I just I was just so tired. I mean, I I got done with work at like seven in the morning, and I was up by like ten thirty, and I started watching it a little bit later in the day, and I was just dead, and I was like, I can't I can't do this. And then it was it was like a five hour. For me, I was watching all of it, so I watched all of it um, in the last like that three was a days. Mistake. <laughs> yeah, that probably wasn't the best idea. Um, so I did that, and I was I was just super tired. So I was like, "Hey, we have to do this tomorrow." Like, I can't I can't concentrate on the show. Like, I've rewatched the 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 freaking frog episode like eight times, and it's really funny. <laughs> but I'm like, I can't. I just keep falling asleep, and then I'm like, "Wait, what's happening?" And I'm like, "Ah, fuck." So uh, same thing was happening today. Also, that's why it took me so long. Um, cause I was, yeah, just I was wondering, dead. I was like, Schwass, I'm going to head to the gym right now. You got an hour and a half. You're like, got it. I come <laughs> yeah. back probably two hours later. Like, oh, I still got three episodes. It's like, God yeah. fucking damn it. <laughs> yeah. So I did my laundry and some other stuff. It was <laughs> also hard. It was also hard because the baby was getting feisty and I'm like trying to listen to this damn thing. And he's like, ah! And they're like, oh, I mean, you got a few Omega. minutes at a time every time. Every time the Magon has thawed, you got some time, you know. Yeah, but I mean, that's the best part. So, like, why would I skip that? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I fast forwarded a couple times, uh, all through the animation. Oh. I was just like, I'm fucking done. I'm done with this Magon has thawed. <laughs> I didn't fast forward it through the last one, the last episode, because I was like. You know, I gotta have the full impact of the final episode. Yeah, um, with the full ma gun sawing. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's how my experience was. I'm sorry you had uh, you had to deal with the the kids screaming throughout the mo- the the uh, show. But what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Yeah, eh, it's nothing. They can <laughs> nothing you can do about it. Uh, he's no. very intently staring at the microphone, though. So I think the. Uh, that podcast for the network in about 15 years will come to mm. pass the spawn of Schweiss cast. The spawn. Do you think he'll, you think he'll want to be referred to as the spawn of Schweiss? <laughs> Hopefully I'll raise him in a, in such a way that he'll celebrate that as his title. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Really it's up to me. I mean, it's up to how I, uh, mold his, his character over the next, you know, 15 to 20 years. You gotta do some research on how, like, uh, they keep Kim Jong Un in power, like over in uh, there, North Korea. <laughs> yeah, figure yeah. out, you know, what's the language? You know, how do they? 
keep outside influences from getting in, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that yeah. he'll just worship you and he'll just be, he'll consider himself so lucky to be spawn of twice. Yeah. How can I completely destroy this person's individuality? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just become the new, yes. uh, I'll become, uh, I'll become the new Dennis Rodman and I'll go over there and be like his best buddy. And like, I need you to teach me how you ruined this entire people. <laughs> 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 this proud ancient, ancient country. Please tell me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh man. Yeah. Uh, so shoot, I guess you already talked about your progress in the world of Final Fantasy. Um, no, I didn't. Oh, I thought... I thought you said you. I thought you said you finished it. Oh no, you're talking about this. Oh well. Ah. <laughs> Where are you in World of Final Fantasy? <laughs> I'll tell you, Schweiz. <laughs> this morning, um, right after I got up, I woke up a little bit early, which was nice, and I was like, uh, well, last night I thought I was going to beat the game. Actually, uh, after I finish Final Fantasy Unlimited, I'm like, well, I got nothing else to do with my life right now. I might as well beat that other game that was just that last game I was on. Last night, I had some issues, or over the last couple nights, I, I've been having trouble because there's like an ending to World of Final Fantasy, and then there's, at the end of the credits, she goes, no! Basically, like, she decides that the fate is not cool, and so you get another save, and then you hop right back into the game. And you, like, go back in time for something, and you have to, like, basically, you're going to change the outcome of what just happened. Um, Whoa, I thought it was change the future, change the past, though. Is that no longer the... No, you actually have to change the past to change the future. Oh. Or at least, at the very least, change the present to change the future. Final Fantasy XIII is wrong. Um, Just straight up wrong. Uh, I I can't keep on, like putting out that propaganda that if you change the future you change the past because it's not true it's yeah not i true. mean but, if um, you think about it it's just obvious like what are you even <laughs> saying <laughs> um anyway so basically it's called the postscript so there's 21 chapters in the game and then there's a postscript which is basically a 20 second chapter after some after credits some of the credits have already rolled it's not all the credits um, they they didn't give they give credit to like half of the people and they're like all right now no the yeah that was it was a fake out on the credits that's what it is oh oh but it's it's a long one like it's a couple minutes but yeah anyway uh you go back into the game and then you're supposed to get basically the big summons on your side they call them mirages in this game mm-hmm. um or like ultra mirages or giant mirages or whatever they are for the summons. And there's like four big quests you're supposed to do. Then there's another quest to get a character back that um, went away. Um, and I'll just keep that vague there. Um, and then there's some stuff that you got to get in the Coliseum, which I didn't realize I had to do. So I had to look something up to find out. I had to go into another town in order to get something to pop. And then also... I didn't realize I had to go to the Coliseum and get some um, of the mirages that I I needed. And um, that that information is just not very clear. I think if you did just a little bit of side stuff, you would have seen like Ramu and Ifrit and Shiva pop up in the Coliseum and you can uh, you can tag those. You can grab them like you do with Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get those guys. And then the other guys you get with the quests. And then if you pay attention to what um, Serafi says, then maybe you might know what to do as far as like going to the like snow town and talking to someone so that you get the character back. But anyway, just not very much information that was like clearly stated online. I think a lot of people just assumed I had done the Coliseum stuff, which no one expects anyone to be Cho Kor, I guess. Like no one expects anyone to see, oh, there's a Coliseum. Cool. I'm just going to walk right past it. Um, <laughs> Cause the Shiva and Ifrit, they pop up after like the first battle or something like that. They're just immediately there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Ramu pops up after like five. <laughs> You didn't, why didn't so, you want to play with the Coliseum? Isn't that, like, exciting for Because you? I just wanted to beat the game, and I wasn't, like, under-leveled or anything. Well, I, now I realize there's no leveling up in the Coliseum. You just get the items. Yeah. You just get the rewards, which I thought was stupid, uh, yeah, by the way. But, yeah, I guess. It's kind of dumb, yeah. 
Anyway, just a mile. I, I started before I figured out the Coliseum bit. I just kept on doing like all the extra quests. Like I did a shitload of them. I did thirty extra quests. Oh wow! And I got a tr- I got a I got a trophy for it, and I was like, "This can't be right. This can't be right." Um. So yeah, I had to find someone else online who was complaining that they couldn't get the thing to pop on a forum somewhere, and then someone else replying like. Oh, you got to get all these guys, Ifrit, Shimu, Shiva, and Ramu. I'm like, did I have those? No, I don't have those. Then I had to look up how to get those guys. And yeah. Um, but then last night, I got to the final battle, and the f- there's five fights in a row in the final battle. And the first one, if you don't have Remedy Plus, Schweiss, save your Remedy Pluses. Don't fucking use them ever until that final fight. Because there's one guy where he will... It's random, because I had one fight, because I've done this four times now. I had one fight where he used it, where he didn't use it at all. But all the three other fights, he would use it constantly. It would cast Doom constantly. Oh, wow, yeah. So, and you're one guy against this other character in the battle. It's not both of your party members, so you have to kill this guy, and you have to keep on curing Doom. And Doom is only cured with a Remedy Plus or an Elixir. So, motherfucker, don't use those Remedy Pluses. In all the other re- battles that you got to do, never use the Remedy Pluses. Ever. Because it's just for that guy. As far as I can tell, the entire game, it gave you Remedy Pluses only to fight that guy. So I died on him. Uh, I died on him once, and then I died on the final fight, like the, the fifth fight in a row. Mm-hmm. Uh, and after that happened, I was like... It was like 2 a.m., and I was like, fuck. All right. <laughs> so I went to bed. And then I woke up this morning and played it three more times. I survived the first fight every time but the, because of the Remedy Pluses that I had stored up. But um, the last guy, I had to fight him uh, three more times. So I guess I had, to, I had to fight the last boss four times total to beat him. He's just uh, got a lot of HP, and he's a heavy hitter, and like my luck was just wasn't good a few times. I got close every time, but like something would happen, and I got I fucked up. Um, so I I kind of expect you to be able to do it one or two tries, but um, for some reason it took me a few tries. But yeah, I beat the game. Uh, I beat the game this morning. I counted up how many fucking Final Fantasy games, just the standalone games we played. It's 48. 48 Final Fantasy games. Jeez, And uh, as of this morning, I beat every single one of them. Um, 48 Final Fantasy games. If you don't count Vagrant Story, I guess it's 47. That's a lot. And then uh, numerous expansions for the online games. You didn't count those either, right? Two television shows and four movies. Um... So yeah, you didn't count the expansions in that, did you? I did not count the expansions. Forty-eight God. standalone games, dude. That is that is a lot of games, man. That's and we got, we got twenty something left for the uh, our total run. Yeah, um, yeah, and two expansions. Sort of. Two, wait, two, two we got expan- Oh, oh we got okay. one fourteen expansion, and then the fifteen add-on scenarios, which we're gonna do before we go into mana. Yeah, we kind of have two 14 expansions because we have the content up to the expansion and then the expansion. So it's like the patch content leading up to the release of uh, uh, Shadowbringers and then Shadowbringers itself. So, yeah, we got some work. We got some work ahead of us. I mean, it's not, this isn't the end, you know? It's just. No. It's the the end of the weekly grind. Yeah, it's, it's (laughs) it's a new beginning. There you go. That's, that's what it's we'll call it. The cash. It's the cash cast. That's what it'll yeah. be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although honestly it'll be less casual than normal because it's just <laughs> whenever we finish a game, it'll probably be like, you know. Nah, it's yeah, that's probably not true. That's where it'll I don't know. be the same. I have no idea what'll happen. We'll probably have like next summer we'll just be the summer of mana and we'll plow or whatever. I don't know what the fuck will happen, but it doesn't matter. I'm done with all the fucking games. I'm done with all the pieces of media that I know of. Um, I guess there's a board game out, which I wasn't aware of. <laughs> I don't know how the fuck we're going to play that. but uh, Yeah, and a card game. 
in the trading yeah, card, card game. game. I don't know if I count as like a standalone game unless you can just play with a pack of cards. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm done, man. I'm done with the Final Fantasy series. I finished it. it. Took five and a half years. <laughs> yeah, you ready to do <laughs> to it all from, over again from beginning to end? <laughs> no, FF2. fuck no, dude. I'm never. Uh, most of these games, I'm never gonna play again. Uh, most of them, I'm never gonna play again. Uh, and there are some games that I really like that I'll never play again just because of like the pain. Like I'll never play Vagrant Story ever again. Oh, really? I'm done. I'm fucking <laughs> yeah. I'm not going through that fucking campaign. I'm not just because of that final boss. I'm fucking no, no, thank you. No Honestly, thanks. that's one of the ones I want to replay the most, just because of how I cool would the like to is. replay it. If that final boss was not part of the situation, maybe my old save is somewhere and I could do New Game Plus, but I will never play that thing from Square One ever again. Just that that final boss was too much. I mean, you um, could just stop playing and not beat it. You could just play it for the, yeah. you know, the 98% of it that's sane and doable <laughs> until the insanity of the end. Like, uh, thinking about that game, like, the crab guy versus the final boss, like, they're only a couple hours apart, but the crab guy is so much easier than the final boss. <laughs> like, it's like a thousand times easier. Yeah. But, so I, I, I feel you. Uh, and we'll certainly, I think we'll get more into this when we do our final episode, but, like, most of the replayers are main series. Um... The main series games. Turns out that's where most of the good games are. Uh, <laughs> it's not that there aren't good games on the spin-offs. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the ones I'm the ones I'm excited to have the pressure off and that I might replay like when the day comes. Um definitely want to do another playthrough of like five and six and maybe a different um maybe the, the different version of eight that they have out, the new one. Yeah. Um, nine. Yeah, just kind of like all the. Yeah, pretty much want to play all replay all, but like one, two, three, eleven. <laughs> one, two, three, eleven, fourteen. You never I'd thought about replay, the, like, the, the glory versions. of replaying eleven and just seeing how fast we could go through all of it. I would rather. Know. <laughs> I'm good. You know, I'm good. I, I beat the game. I, I have no need. Uh, I'm excited, really excited for Kingdom Hearts games when we get there. I've never played a single mana game, and I know some of those are considered classics, so that'll be kind of fun to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, man. My my journey has come to an end as far as the games titled Final Fantasy go. It's yeah, done. and some not titled Final Fantasy, but whatever. Yeah. But they kind of count. Including two Chocobo games. Uh, yeah. But you don't know, don't remind me. <laughs> those are part we got of the, a couple more of those to play too. Yeah, yeah, the racing. Um, I have one of those. I think I think I bought one. Oh wow! Yeah, just because I was like, oh, I found it, saw it one day, and it wasn't for the show. I mean, maybe I was gonna like try to pull some bullshit near the end and be like, oh well, you know, we played Chocobo Tales, Chocobo Dungeon. Like, how come we're not playing Chocobo Racing and Chocobo Racing Two? Huh? Just just seems kind of wrong. Because <laughs> it was titled Final Fantasy Fables. Only here, and though. I, only here, but I didn't know that. Fuck, Christ. Jesus. <laughs> I fucked up, all right, man? I, we didn't have to play those. We'd be done with the show by now. <laughs> I asked that uh, that insane trophy hunter that likes the show, um, I asked him, like, how come he's not playing, you know, Chocobo Dungeon release? And he's like, oh, it's not a real Final Fantasy. And I'm like, ah. I mean, true, but... But you're a trophy whore. But we like, had to play it. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, now it's out with trophies. What are you doing? But he even, he was like, no, nah, I don't fucking think so. <laughs> Not today. Um, Not today. Uh, yeah, that was... What do we say to the game of Chocobo's Dungeon? <laughs> yeah. Not today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I, where, where are you? I... Little I, slacker bitch. Yeah. I am playing Sekiro instead, but I did get to, uh, I think I'm on like chapter 13 or 14 or something. I can't remember what I told you the other day. I haven't played it since then. Um, but 21 I, is basically five chapters. It's got oh, five wow. distinct sections in it. Yeah. 
So yeah, so I'm like... It took me 24 hours something. It's on Twitter, whatever the final time is. Nice. I'm like halfway, probably. Um, I just went back to town. I was running out of uh, healing items, and I was getting kind of pissed off at one of the fights I was on, because I was just like, yeah, it's kind of annoying. Like, I ran out of potions, and I, I have my stack set up right now to be basically just a powerhouse, and mm-hmm. I don't remember who I have Kira on, and I'm too fucking lazy to look, so I'm like, all right, I'm just going to go back and get some items. And then when I went back, the game gave me the cutscene. It's like, oh, there's a Colosseum here now. And so I've just started doing a bunch of Colosseum stuff um, just for yeah, shits and giggles. Get, yeah, get your get yourself some Remedy Pluses and some extra potions. And save them for the final battle. Yeah. Final battles. Uh, it's not like it's super difficult. I guess I probably could have skimped by if I was a few levels lower or whatever, but, you know, it's difficult enough. Might as well make the last final area kind of easier. Uh, honestly, the hardest thing in the game is the fucking summons you got to get <laughs> in the quest beforehand, because one of them has, like, infinite XP. It took me, like, 40 minutes to take it fucking down. Um, very long fight. Um, very long. He hits pretty hard, too, so... Jeez. Um, yeah. Well, Shrice, you got two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not much time. Not much time left now. Wait, wait. Two weeks. What are we doing next week? What's, what's going on? I'm sorry. You got one week. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't think I have two weeks. <laughs> Shrice, you have one week. You have one fucking week uh, to beat that game. Uh, no exceptions. No exceptions. Yeah. Um, so play it instead of Sekiro. I'm sorry. New Clan's got to take uh, got to take a back seat on it's, UFF. It's not necessarily the podcast. It's the game. I know. <laughs> there's, there's one that is really good, and there's one that's really, really mediocre. <laughs> World of Final Fantasy gets a little better as it goes along. Oh, okay. Yeah, it does. It, it really does. Um. It grew on it grew on me. It grew on me. My my feelings towards it are not as acidic as they were a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, you've taken some tums. It it, it gave you some tums yeah, part way through, and now it you're, gave me you're, some tums. You're settled. All right. And my guys were overlapped. Also, Schweiss. Oh, ho ho! Accidentally found out another like auto battle feature in World of Final Fantasy. I don't know if you discovered it, but it took me until the last chapter. Uh, or actually, that was the postscript when I found this out because I did it on accident. You press that uh, fast forward button and then press the big square or the big rectangle button in the middle of the PS4, and it will. They will fight. They will just do whatever the last action was oh. over and over again. So it's true. It's true auto mode then. It's true like auto school. mode. Nice. Yep, dude. Or no, memory. Memory auto. That's what that I'm kind of mad because there was a couple parts that were like a little grindy, a little boring, and I could have just done that instead of mashing the X button. Well, damn. I'll have to use that for the for those areas, the areas where I'm just slaughtering things nonchalantly. Yeah, dude. Um, so, yeah, World of Final Fantasy. I Final mean, Fantasy Unlimited. Yeah, yeah, this is it's crazy, man. It like it seemed like even at the beginning of the year there was so much left. And now it's now it's not. Nah, we had a lot of short games left. This was the only This was one of two long games left. The other one was Four Heroes of Light. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It wasn't it wasn't too much, I guess. Nope. So that's um, that's where we're at and that's where we're going to be with the show. Um yeah. That's right. So, uh, do we, are we doing news? Um, Mm -hmm. no, it's a review. I don't think we should do news. Okay. You can wait. Yeah, that much to say about it, huh? Well, I don't think anything (laughs) huge has come out either. (laughs) Because when it does, we get tweeted, you know, like, oh, did you see this? It's like, yeah, no, I didn't see it. (laughs) I live in a bubble. And if it's not Metallica, if it's not James or uh, it's not Lars James, Ulrich. Uh, recovery, yeah. Yeah, if it's not Lars Ulrich about it. talking about James's recovery, I'm not going to know. Like, I'm just not, man. <laughs> <I'd>, <laughs> sorry. Oh, man. You know what's 
Okay. All right. I'm done. I'm done reminiscing. We'll we'll reminisce in two weeks from now. Sorry, me and you are going to reminisce for two weeks from now. The audience will hear it in like eight weeks from now. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Heads up on that one. We're recording our final episode in two weeks, but you guys won't hear it until December. Exactly. Um, we got some special episodes coming out. That's um, right. Very special. special content. Yeah, some shit I gotta have to fucking work on. Okay. All right. Now I'm dreading. All right. Um. Well, where do you want to start with Final Fantasy Unlimited? Um, I say we start with the. Just kind of the development of it, so let's dive in. Final Fantasy Unlimited is an anime television series based on Square Enix's Final Fantasy game franchise. Um, the series was directed by Mahiro Maeda, and he's apparently a big deal when it comes to uh, animes. He's been called one of the most imaginative visualists in anime, and he did a bunch of stuff for like Mad Max Fury Road the design for it. Um, so he's been involved in some big stuff and this is not one of them, obviously. Uh, but still it's produced by a bunch of people that we don't know. Makiku Iwata, Takeshi Sasamura, um, written by Atsuhiro Tomioka. And I guess he wrote an anime for the Phoenix Wright video game series, which we haven't played anything of, but a bunch of you guys probably have. Um, the studio is that the studio that developed it was Gonzo Studio, which I kind of chuckle at almost every time. Um, I can't imagine why. Yeah, yeah, and it originally aired. Uh, the run was the second of October two thousand one to the twenty sixth of March two thousand and two for a total of twenty five episodes. Um, and in the U.S., it aired on Sci Fi. So, yes, there are things on Sci Fi. No, you still don't want to watch what they have. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did watch uh, Battlestar Galactica on Sci-Fi once, that was pretty good. Okay, um, I heard about Sharknado and never watched it. Uh, it's pretty funny. It's like ridiculous. Like there's a part where they they make it look like it's rainy, but you can still totally see the sun. Like it's hilarious, man. It's oh so fucking... man, <laughs> it's so bad. Ah. Uh, yeah, it's 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 fun. I, I never watched the second one or the third or the fourth, but the first one was fun. So, um, shit. Yeah, basically, it's just thematically connected to Final Fantasy. Um, a bunch of random creatures and ideas from the series. But yeah, other than but that, it takes it doesn't... place in it takes place in uh, Wonder Wonderland or whatever Never Neverland. Yeah, it takes place yeah. in Never Neverland Ranch. Um... <laughs> Yeah, Kaze is Michael Jackson. Uh, <laughs> you and it's I dangerous. are always getting in these predicaments <laughs> where, you know, something bad might happen, so we're always trying to escape. Yeah, you and uh, I. Uh, if, you know, you honestly, I. for a second, I thought you were talking about us, and I was like, <laughs> we always get into these situations. I'm like, what do you mean? Talking about, like, potential pedos <laughs> on the show? I was like, I don't think we've ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> And then I was like, oh, oh, the characters, you and I. You and Got I. Why you and AI. You <laughs> and I are the main characters of the show. They're brothers and sisters. Sorry, a brother and a sister. I is the sister. You is the brother. And, I, you know, I did not rewatch the whole show. I just know that they, like, their parents go missing because of Omega, which is, you know, the giant creature from the sky, uh, destructive force. And then they go after them, and they're on, like, a mystery train or something like that. They meet a whole bunch of characters, and then they go on a journey to find their parents. There's, um, there's a group of bad guys, I guess. Like, what, like, this little queen, this, like little annoying nine-year-old princess wants to take over the world 
and she has all her henchmen that just do whatever uh, she tells them to. And uh, all these henchmen are always like putting out these like situations in order to um, to thwart you and I. Yeah, you from, know what's the uh, best part about all of that? From winning or whatever. It's that the yeah, what's the best is totally part? it's totally a boy. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, the Earl guy, he's he's a dude. <laughs> the, the Earl. Evil, the the Earl Tyrant, that's the name of the antagonist. Oh wait, that's a boy? Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I fucked up. <laughs> I mean, you can't tell. He's just like a like a androgynous child. What was today? What was today, Schweiss? <laughs> oh shit! Today is uh, International Pronoun Day. <laughs> <laughs> no, your pronouns, bro. I fucked up. Sorry. <laughs> Should have asked they them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the what's the one? It's like Zool or something. I mean, I know it's not Zool. Zer. Zer. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it does sound like Zool, doesn't it? <laughs> there is no he. There is only Zool. Only <laughs> Zool. Uh, can't wait for the flood of one star reviews. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Look, I know George Carlin said there was a rule that you don't pick on the downtrodden, but no, the rule is you pick on everybody. <laughs> Uh, just, in common speech, you say they, them, in place of he, she, all the time. So that doesn't really, like, I mean, that that's kind of fine. I know, like, the new dictionary thing, like, use that. But if I have to come up with zer, zelch, I don't even know what the fuck they are. There's, like, these tiny circles of people who, who even know what these pronouns are supposed to be. Yeah, so, it's like the... The word's like, not out, guys. It's like a secret handshake. It's like the Illuminati, you know, you have to, like... <laughs> It's like do crazy handshake the, movements. The Masons. Yeah, the the Freemason handshake. Freemason handshake. Yeah, it's um, like that, but with your mouth. Yeah, must be, must be with like the hyper elite sociologists departments in universities, very liberal universities. <laughs> like these, yeah. this, how how many? What is it? What's well, the term? Is it turtles all the way down? Like how far down do we need to go before this is actually affecting anybody? Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's like, I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Zimzer uh, yeah. wants Zimzer, to take over the world. Tyr- Earl Tyrant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all they do is call him Your Majesty. So I guess that's why. Like, I just assumed it was. A, it's a. It's definitely a woman doing the voice acting. So I just assumed. Sorry. Yeah. I assumed on National Pronouns Day. I assumed. The gender of this character. Man, you know... <laughs> Very I, sorry. We didn't even know it was that until just barely. <laughs> until I said it. And I was like, oh, wow, interesting. Because Twitter was like, oh, it's National Pronoun Day. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> just, um, okay. I didn't know that was a thing. Is that like today, the first one? Probably, but... Probably. Like, how many blank... Look, man... It... Once again, I put this tweet out like a few weeks ago. If your kids aren't getting school off because of it, it's not a holiday. Sorry. Yeah, I yeah, it's just not. <laughs> I expanded mine by a few. Um, yeah, like I think you got like fourteen federal holidays and a couple state holidays, like depending yeah. on where you're at. That's yeah. it. We're done. See, I'm sick I of these know. fucking causes, dude. I'm sick of them. I'm just annoyed <laughs> yeah. by them. Yeah, I now that I now that I'm a real boy at the post office, I have to count bullshit holidays like uh, Columbus Day. Like it's not that I think that Columbus is a you know that's a national holiday. I know it is. I know, but it's, it's just not recognized by like ten states. But it's a national holiday. It's not. It's not like a you don't go to school holiday though, is it? Because I think Jason no, went to school. not in California. I don't know what it is over there. I cannot remember. I think he went. I think it's a day that the government takes off but not the people. yeah yeah i thought um i thought public offices take it off i think i looked this up because i was like what the fuck what's going on yeah um and it's not that it's not like a bold explorer and all that shit like whatever but i mean he never really landed in america so it's an odd one for us to celebrate and so i always consider yeah, that one, one of those for- yeah, one of those bullshit <laughs> holidays. It's like, I mean, we can't really have Amerigo Vespucci Day because we named the fucking country after him. 
And that just sounds like 4th of July 2.0. I don't even know where, where Amerigo Vespucci went. I have no idea. Like, I don't know the history of that. Yeah, I mean, for all I know, it could have landed in, like, Alaska, and we're like, ah, counts. <laughs> counts. I just know that's who we named the country after, and that's literally it. Um, but... Well, the continents were named that. The New World was named that, and we called ourselves the United States of America. We didn't yeah. name it after anyone it was already like the continents were already named america that's true that's true it, yeah it's kind of like so a, we borrowed it sort of from what so was we, what termed. we were calling was ourselves were a bunch of states in fact i've been reading biographies on uh the first four presidents um and a lot of it was like they had like these individual states and they wanted other places that had um i, I think it was I think it was Jefferson or Franklin had this idea that, you know, we would just, all these things, all these colonies with Europe, they would break away from Europe and then they would join our free statelyhood, basically. That was his, that was like one of those guys' idea was that like, oh, Canada will join us, you know, like the uh, West Florida is going to join us, you know, all these things. And eventually it just became those 13 colonies and then the territories that they took over and the wars that they had with Spain and Mexico where they take over more uh, stuff. And no one ever, like, freely joined the Union. <laughs> uh, territories freely uh, became states, but um, the territories true, yeah. gained were not like, oh, I volunteer to be part of the United States, which is what the idea was. True, true, that's true. Yeah. Uh, interesting, though. I really like... Uh, I didn't know you read a... Um read one on uh franklin no i didn't read one on franklin he was just talked about a lot all the same guys are talked about a lot uh believe it or not when you're when you're reading uh all the i'm reading a presidential biography on every single president in a row so i I started with you know ron chernos george washington so i didn't i didn't read anything about like i didn't read a biography on hamilton or franklin even though outside of the guys who became president those are probably the two most talked about figures yeah um i really like ben franklin it's hilarious though because he became such a huge liability at the end because he just like would talk (laughs) like he became like this old asshole that like would not stop talking about shit and it's like look man we're trying to like create a country here like and you can't just be blowing secrets and shit because i'm pretty sure he went senile from what from what it sounds like so that would be. Interesting I don't know. One. I don't know about the end of his life. All I know is like what John Adams and <laughs> Thomas Jefferson thought of him. Uh, <laughs> and John Adams was like, well, he was probably a great man back in the day, but John Adams <laughs> was with him in France, and he was like, he's he's lazy. That's what John Adams like would write to his wife and talked about how lazy Benjamin Franklin was, <laughs> and like he he preached all this like self discipline stuff, and he did not follow with it like john adams did not like franklin that much um, <laughs> very funny um yeah when i read that i was like oh that's interesting i read uh benjamin franklin's autobiography uh, a couple years ago oh nice but yeah i i but, think it's uh, interesting yeah because we view all those guys like we're like oh they must have all been buddies and it's like yeah probably not no and, i there was there was by the time thomas jefferson was running for president uh after Adams, Adams's first turn, it became pretty partisan, and um, James Madison and Thomas Jefferson were huge uh, uh, proponents of um, of the Democratic Republican Party, and then uh, Alexander Hamilton was kind of the other side of things uh, with the Federalist Party. Yeah. So it's funny that that's the case because that was one of the things that Jefferson always talked about, like being a bad idea. But then he yeah, totally caused he it. He did. But Thomas Jefferson and James Madison were both guys who went back on whatever they believed before multiple times. They would just continually just change their mind about things throughout their life. Um like Thomas Jefferson with the Okay, guys, this yeah, is a Final Fantasy podcast. Yeah. I'm sorry.
<laughs> uh, speaking Derailed. of Derailed. They don't they yeah. don't they they're not related to this show uh, at all either, by the way. No. Not at all related yeah. to no. Final Fantasy Unlimited. So the kids yeah, they're, are in they're, they're so, looking for their parents. The fucking Zer is after them. Oh, God. Um and um yeah. They're they're still looking for their parents. Eventually, like in the second half of the show, it just becomes one thing. Uh, instead of like multiple worlds that they're going through, it just becomes a, a cube. A giant cube underwater that the ship is stuck in and they have to go through all these challenges. Yeah. Um, they put them in a Rubik's they, cube and it's like, ah, oh, yeah. Sid is like me. He's like, fuck, I don't know how to do these things. Like, <laughs> I always thought it was the douchebags that knew how to do them. It's like, oh, look, I can, if you just flip it this many times this way, this many times this way, ha ha, it's done. I'm so smart. I memorized a pattern. It's like, okay. <laughs> I always tell myself, I'll figure it out when I figure it out, and then I never figure it out. So it's like, fuck it. Fuck Rubik's Cubes. Yeah. So, so they put them in a fucking Rubik's Cube. Yeah, and honestly, like, I I think the second half of the show is probably better. more solid, but I kind of miss that outro. Like, I miss the shit, the shit storm that is that. <laughs> like, when it, when it played that other outro music, I was like, ah, oh, really? I was expecting... The, <laughs> that it wasn't there. I skipped it. As soon as it cut to black, I was like, I'm not t- touching one second of this goddamn theme. Uh, Whatever it is. All right, yeah, so, I mean, they're, they're, it's like an alternate universe, right? Because Earth right. gets basically ravaged by these random creatures. They, they look really freaky, too. They're like block dragon things that I, I don't like the way they look. Just gonna put that out there. I, I think that they look gross, kind of. Um, but Earth gets destroyed by it, and then these kids' parents just sort of disappear, right? And then they, it's like fucking Harry Potter, where they have to get on the train at like eleven past midnight or some shit on a Monday. <laughs> like, yeah, it was platform nine and three quarters, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, it, it brought them to the Doom Train, which isn't really the Doom Train, but it's just a. It's a it's a random train, and one of the funniest things I was watching it with the uh, with Jace. Um, he's five, and he was like, he he was like six episodes in by the time he asked this. He's like, "Why is there a saw on the end of the train?" And I'm like, "You know, I don't I don't know. I've just kind of been sitting here just accepting whatever's given to me. Like I don't I don't know." And then <laughs> and then later when it showed the Magon again, he's like, "Why does everything have a drill?" In this TV show, <laughs> like, why does everything have to have a drill on it? And I'm like, dude, that's a great question. Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Final Fantasy Unlimited. <laughs> why does everything have to have a drill in it? Yeah, exactly. It's like, are we, are we up? It, it, it's not steampunk. It's not like, you know, super sci-fi. It's just everything has a drill. It's no, it's yeah. So it's like, it's this this world called Wonderland, which I which is like. It's covered in this magic soil, this magic dust, I guess, and it makes everything kind of crazy. I guess it's like nuclear power. Yeah, or cocaine uh, also has or the same effect. Yeah, something like that. And uh, so basically that's – and you, they're going through this world and you see all these like Final Fantasy things. Like they got like the world of – they got like a cactar area. They got like um, they got like a mushroom area. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. They got a whole bunch of like it's like levels in a video game, basically up to a certain point in the show. It's like that. It's very um, episodic, uh, Alice in Wonderlandy. Um, uh, <laughs> there's a great line, of course, one of my favorite lines where he goes, "This place is a normal. It's Wonderland." Like that's yeah. <laughs> uh that basically sums up the entire show i think thematically yeah. right there along with the it moved yeah uh i i i love all of the quotes in this thing they're so good <laughs> like the i i laughed really hard when she did the wonderland thing that's like episode one dude that's like oh, yeah. the the beginning and so it's crazy this that we still remember <laughs> it's wonderland <laughs> Um, yeah, so they are joined on their quest to find their parents by someone with Keegan arts skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like Keegan call, martial arts skills. I like to call those the Kegel 
mar- martial arts skills. What's her name? Wa- what's her name? Because I kept on thinking Misato, <laughs> which is from Neon Genesis Evangelion. She's basically the same character, uh, same role within the show. Anyway, no. Uh, her what name is her is, name? Uh, her name is, is it Lisa. It's Lisa Pacifist. Lisa Pacifist. Yeah, they're really, really uh, yeah. on the nose when it comes to the names. Even though she kicks ass? Yeah, she's not really... I mean, she doesn't touch anyone, but she destroys them with her her light, sensual breathing. She's got, like, Betty Boop... She goes into Betty Boop mode, which is what she looks like in the close-up when she does her, like, little move. Yeah. She's got some kind of spiritual energy power, which doesn't even show up until, like, pretty late in the show. Yeah, it's like um, it's like halfway almost, and she just goes like, "Yeah, it's like, <sighs> oh, she has special powers too." Yeah, she does <sighs> the. Oh man, she does the. It's like the thing it's that a lot the of face grabber alien thing, but she does it with her vagina, and then she activates her Kegel powers and just fucking, <laughs> just fucking crushes whoever. Kegin, just kind of, Kegin powers. Oh, Kegin. Kegin. Oh, sorry, not, sorry. Not Kegel powers. Come on, come on. Don't be gross. You got to keep that shit. Um, you got to keep that shit nice and snug up in there with those Kegel powers. That's right, man. That's <laughs> right. You know, men can uh, really use. Uh, they're, they're apparently, yeah, you, know, you can last longer if you learn those Kegel powers. That's right. Yeah, um, so I'll have to ask uh, Lisa Pacifist about that. Yeah, but, uh, show me your Kegels. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's her. That's her dealio. She's helping the kids move along. She's got like her own past to deal with. There's a mysterious Vincent Valentine esque character who, at the beginning of the show, it seems like he's doing it on purpose. But I guess he's like called to do it. But he's basically got like this super weapon called the Ma Gun. Yeah, and he puts soil charges, so different types of soil from around Wonderland that are prepared for him. I guess he puts these soil charges within his gun. And guys, this is a third of the show, so this is very important. Yeah, um, he puts the he very slowly. He guys, he has to get out the first. He, <clears throat> I'm sorry. They'll, they'll get into a bad situation. They'll deus ex machina almost every episode of this television show. No, it's, it's, this it's, it's deus, ex, based... deus ex machina is what I started calling oh, it. Oh, fuck. End. <laughs> 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 the god of the machine. Uh, you should win a Pulitzer thawed. Prize for that one. <laughs> um, so anyway... He gets the Ma Gun out, right, whenever they're in, like, a bad situation. The Ma Gun, of course, is the uh, Deus Ex Magina. He puts the soil charges in there. It makes a lot of noises, like, clicks into place. And then he shoots it. And then three sperm-like organisms come out of the gun, stream together, and create a summon. And then that summon is used to destroy... Or occasionally not destroy uh, in order to bring up the stakes, um, the thing that they have to fight against. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it's almost it's every a, episode. It's a pattern. Almost every episode. And the whole thing takes about three and a half minutes. So first they'll, they'll be like in a shit situation and then the music will get ominous. And then he'll look down at the, at, at the screen on a low angle. He's looking down and he goes, it moved. which is uh being you know immature children that we are it always seems like he's looking down at his crotch and he's talking about his penis yeah well i mean it doesn't Uh, help that uh you know i mean it's i i seriously think that it's mostly about it's like all phallic imagery about kaze or kaze uh, because like, there's even parts where you know everyone like the 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 cabbage chick, um, is talking about how like oh, yeah. she's like, oh, what's what's wrong with your ma gun? Isn't it working? You can't get it to work, and everyone's like laughing and pointing at him because this ma gun's all shriveled up and like hiding. Yeah, yeah, there's a there's a whole episode about how they figured out that he can't make his ma gun work by yeah, his he, will alone. He can't get it up. Like he can't. <laughs> There's an episode dedicated to him not being able to get his ma gun up, and I'm like, wow, this is this is all about the ma gun. Um, and I mean, Kaze is kind of the main it character. It moved, it gets bigger, and then he shoots sperm out of it. Exactly. And it creates a being. Yeah, Of it's, course. Yeah. 
It's definitely like a fa- it's definitely phallic imagery. I definitely. honestly, I think there's no doubt. Yeah, there's seriously. It's like that's what this is about. It's about this guy's erectile dysfunction. It moved. <laughs> it just moved. <laughs> uh, and yeah, they they there's always a, a a you know a god of the machine moment. They're always getting rescued from these insane odds. Um, and for the first half of the show, it's like every episode, like he always does the summon thing. And then they start not doing it occasionally, and I was kind of put off by that. I was like, oh, really? That's like the coolest part. Like, even though it's the same. <laughs> I was so fucking. Are you kidding me? No. No, it's not the coolest part. Fuck. Yeah. It was cool the first two times. <laughs> and then it became, oh, this is how they fill time. Yeah, it's what so well, it they don't says, have to write as much. It's got a 22 minute time, right? Runtime on almost all the episodes. Yeah. You've three got three minutes is the manga. You've got a three minute manga, and you've three got three minutes of credits. Three minutes of credits. Thirty <laughs> seconds of like Fabula, the clam person, being our guide to Wonderland, telling us about. Yeah, she's just doing a recap. Yeah, and then, tell, and then saying who the who the episode's about. Yeah. That's, um, that's all she does. <laughs> so really there's like 15 minutes a pop max. Like, Yeah. As long as there's, if there's a, on the episodes without the Magan, which are the episodes where they actually try to write and have some plot, um, those tend to, yeah, those are like 18 minutes. You know? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's a bunch of like, it's really weird because it kind of jumps into this world instantly and you know, there are two people that are opposing forces. There's a guy named McKenshi, um, who's kind of aiding the, they're called the Lords of Gaudium. And they're the, the henchmen of the Earl. Right. And like immediately upon getting in this world, like these kids are already being chased down by this person and there's no real explanation for it. Um, and all that Kaze knows is that he really fucking hates McKenshi. Um, and Kaze is the unlimited, right? Um, and yeah, the, they started dropping that line about halfway through the show a couple yeah, times. Yeah, and I mean, he is the coolest character in the entire thing, outside of maybe the the British guy that has like almost as much sex appeal as as Kaze himself in the show. <laughs> um, it's uh, and. You know, they they there's kind of this theme of no one remembers what the fuck happened. Like everyone knows that the you know the people that they're with they they join this like group of rebels called the Kamodeen, and they have their like half of the time they have nipples on the outside of their like standard issue uniforms. Half the time they don't. I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, but they use uh, <laughs> as their weapon. They have uh, little darts that they shoot out of uh, reeds and on their ships they have huge missiles that they use blowing power to launch so everyone blows into a tube <laughs> and <laughs> they lob these weapons of mass destruction out of their their submarine and uh, you know with the fucking power of breath which is quite powerful because I mean McKenshi all he does whenever he walks into a place is just <sighs> For like the first half, he wouldn't speak. He would just breathe. He yeah, would just McKenzie exhale. has his own. Uh, he's got his own um, Magan esque animation thing that takes up a good amount of time. Yeah, yeah. It's like Kaze's got. Um, he's got like his little bullets that he plays around with, and McKenzie has like little flasks of shit that he uses as his weapon. So and I then guess he, like, like slices them in half. I don't even know what the fuck is happening with the with the flasks up in the air. By yeah. the way, yeah, he's just like carbon dioxide is my power. <laughs> it has breathed. Yeah, half the show right there. I <laughs> uh, so. The ghost train, um, the train that they get on in the beginning, eventually gets uh, destroyed, um, and they by chaos or no, no, it's I think yeah, chaos destroys it. I'm pretty sure, but the Earl is like trying to gather all these pieces of uh, I think it's I think it's Omega. Yeah, it's the pieces of Omega because chaos is just kind of going crazy and and 
eating everything and devouring it. It's kind of similar to like Atomos from the series where he just like consumes everything. And that's what chaos is doing wildly. Um, and the Earl is trying to capture all of the pieces of, um, Omega. And I guess that's going to make him become super powerful or some shit. I don't know. It's weird. They're like weird crystals. Um, the crystal imagery in the show is also kind of disturbing cause it's, I don't know, like creatures or like things show up with crystals and then they just like drop the crystals. Like they're just taking a shit and the crystals fall down and like stuff comes out of them. It's really weird. I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about those. The whole show is really weird though. To be. Yeah. It's bizarre. <laughs> be- yeah. And the first half is kind of not really that great. Honestly. No, it's really not. Um, the closer they get to their parents and the closer they get to like Omega and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, the, the only, better the show gets. The only episode I like in the earlier chunk is the one where they find the dudes that are like endlessly making and unmaking uh, parts, like mechanical parts. So I thought that part was kind of cool. But that was mostly just because it was like a weird hypnotic song that they were singing. And, you know, it kind of reminded me of like the fucking Misty Mountain song from The, the Hobbit, but like a billion times less awesome. <laughs> But I don't know. For some reason, I'm like, how oh, that's much not better bad. is the Misty Mountain song than the movie it's in? <laughs> uh, also, about a million times. <laughs> that's probably like twenty <laughs> times better than the movie it's in. Maybe, maybe twenty five. It's not a great movie, but it's a pretty sweet song. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Betty Boop. By the way, uh, Lisa. Lisa. That's right. Um. Her tits are very, very active throughout this entire Oh, yeah. Show. There's a lot of budget going into her boobs just flying around. Oh, oh man. I remember the like the last shot of her like coming yeah. from whatever like <laughs> trance mode she was in. It was like Jiggle City, bro. Oh, yeah. Like, this is animated television. You can kind of keep things in place. We can pretend she's wearing a sports bra or something, but they just don't. They're just like, no, no. Five times as much jiggle as there would be in real life. Yeah. Let's add some of that shit. And sh- her breasts are jiggling throughout all 25 episodes of Final Fantasy Unlimited, a children's television show where apparently, um, I-, I assume that some kids, assuming this was watched by anyone, uh, I think some kids probably had a sexual awakening watching this show. Yeah. It seems like one of those things. I would have. I mean, there's also a scene with uh, <laughs> one of the other characters. Oh, shit. What is her name? Um, the girl who's one of the uh, one of the Comodine. I think it's... The Cabbage? No, not the Cabbage. The Comodine oh. are the, the good guys. They're like the rebel force. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. The, the one that, um, that Sid kisses. Yeah. As a frog? Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a part with her where she's, like, aiming her weapon at something, and it shows, like, the crosshairs outside, and then, like, it cuts to the inside, and it's, like, her, like, all sexualized, and she's like, oh, we're gonna get him, and it's, like, the target on her instead, and I was like, wow, that's, like, the, it's, like, a cum shot target right there, you're just like, where am I gonna go? You're terrible. You're terrible. (laughs) And all those guys are, all those guys are blowing into the horns. Yeah, they're blowing into the horns, just trying to, like, yeah, God, yeah. (laughs) Uh, so it's, it's weirdly sexual at times. Um, and everyone wants to fuck everyone else. I want to fuck the cabbage lady. I do too. Yeah. I mean, I know the smell will probably never go away, but that's fine. <laughs> the smell of cabbage? <laughs> yeah. I'll just, my, 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 my penis will just smell like cabbage until the day I die. Uh, <laughs> just like, it's like a hot, hot cabbage, you know? <laughs> hot cabbage. Yeah. A, 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 a boiled cabbage smell <laughs> <laughs> emanated from my crotch from that day forward. Uh, uh, agreed, Yeah, though. she's very... Yeah, yeah. There's something about the cabbage lady who's one of the bad guys. Um, yeah. Cabbage lady, very... Yeah. And she has there's these... Like a, uh, there's a cabbage lady. There's like a fucking starfish that stands on two legs, talks out the back of his head. Um the fuck else is there oh yeah there's like the jester guy who's like yeah that guy i I love that guy's movements because every once in a while he's just like a one of those inflatable uh 
like car sales things. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> inflatable <so> noodle guy. <laughs> I, I die whenever I see that. Those are always the best. <laughs> He's like, Your Majesty, uh, just whipping about. Yeah. Um, and there's like, could could you? little thing that follows everybody around. I have no idea what she actually does. I can't fucking remember. Yeah, she like watches uh, stuff from McKenzie, I think. Uh, that oh, was yeah, another okay. question that Jace asked me. He's like, why does she always say that? And I'm like, you know, I, I honestly no, no clue. I don't think they say My favorite why. was when the cactuses were saying their own name. As far as I could tell, they were saying like Pika. Like the fucking cactars were saying Pika. Pika yeah. P. Pikachu. Yeah. That uh, was weird. Also, the cactars weird. live on the planet in uh, in Interstellar with the giant wave. Apparently, that's yeah. the dimension they live in. They do. That's right. If you look real close, you can see Anne Hathaway. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and running, Gub. running. Yeah. Uh, there you go. And then, I mean, after that, they get they basically they catch sight of their parents at one point in the show and then they know that their parents exist you know and then um they're working for the bad guys and they don't recognize them yeah 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 so i mean it gets to the point where they they get on their submarine and they're trying to head for um telos i guess or telos it's called something like that where they have a natural deposit of flying water and apparently that's going to power the ship to reach the flying fortress that the Earl is at. And the Earl wants it too, because he wants to get Omega's power. Um, and that's like the very end of the show. I mean, they're trapped in some weird, like celebrity squares. They're trapped in, bullshit. in the cube that we already talked about. Yeah. Yeah. The celebrity uh, squares Rubik's cube for a while. And it's like <laughs> weird challenges that they have to overcome to get out. Um, yeah, I think one of the best challenges was, uh, and this is my favorite episode of the whole show, um, randomly, like, a frog guy just comes into existence and is, like, talking to Sid, and he's like, and he says ribbit after everything he says, which I found very amusing. Um, like, this old British, like, hey, you must find the thing, ribbit. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've got like a, a world class like British narrator. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Yes, <laughs> ribbit. Uh, and he turns Sid. He turns Sid into a frog. Sid, Sid in this uh, show is like the engineer who uh, creates yeah, yeah. all the craft. And uh, Sid figures out that it's going to be like the old tale of like he's got to kiss the princess in order to become like fully human and he has to do this within a certain amount of time or else the the ship will of course sink to the next level lower on this giant cube puzzle thing that he's been put into anyway that episode was uh was everything of course in this world eats frogs like they set it up like a few episodes earlier and then um and so he has to like go through and he's uh He's got to find the, someone to kiss him. Pretty great, pretty yeah. great uh, episode. Really funny, for um, sure. Yeah, this is my this is my favorite episode too. I really liked the final episode also. I thought it was pretty good. Um, and then yeah. the cactus one, just for the cactars. Uh, there are a few pretty good episodes in this show, if I'm going to be honest. Like, but the frog one was the most fun the show ever had for me. Yeah. Uh. I, I don't know because it was character based and it was funny situation. It was just yeah, fun. yeah. Was, Sid was, was like time. Sid was like uh, walking around trying to find people to to understand him. He's like, all right, Lisa will have her Kegel powers are going to help me. Like <laughs> she'll be able to sense me with her Kegels. And he sees someone showering, and he's like, oh, that's that's Miss Lisa in there showering. And he's like justifying to it himself, like, oh, I'm not going into perv on her i'm going in because i you know i need her to use her kegels to know it's me and then he goes in and it's the fucking british like british dude that has the weird sexual scenes with lisa where they're like in front of a fireplace and he's just staring longingly into her eyes <laughs> and it's super funny because like this the 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 mist parts that it's just that guy like washing his chest and then he turns around sees the frog and like screams and then he runs out into the hallway and then you know uh Lisa comes out and she's like, "What's going on?" And the guy's like, "Oh, it's a frog." 
and he just kind of like goes back in his room and she sees him naked just like out in the hall and that happens multiple times in the show yeah um, but that's um, the i think i thought that was a great episode that was a lot of fun great episode uh and it gets more dramatic when they like see their parents and he's not there there's like the last character near the end um that was like turns out to be a piece of omega it's like some like sensitive boy character and he's got like the water suit on and i finds him and uh kind of after that moment the, the show is then in serious mode because uh <laughs> then everybody has to like face themselves and then finally of course like the big the little girl princess sorry boy princess um the boy <laughs> prince prince, <laughs> prince. um oh, it could be a princess remember remember the holiday <laughs> uses all the power that of course their their parents were helping build in a lab or whatever in order to like they become basically the ultimate being and then everybody uses their separate powers to kill him including like a moogle that's really just a pig not even a moogle uh yeah a moogle that has like randomly the, the comes other in, in like two of, episodes he has like the other half of kaze's broken uh sunglasses by the way i thought that was weird like they have oh, like no i didn't even notice that yeah okay. yeah and they have the same markings i guess he's a uh a priest of soil so soil is a religion um hey soil is my power yeah that's right you can't use that power <laughs> that's my power <laughs> Soil is my power. Yeah, so he's um, there. Uh, and that's just another, like, just toss in of the old characters that we know, you know, from the yeah. series to make it Final Fantasy as much as they can, which is really mostly just thematically. And of course, like, their parents were. Uh, ever, they defeat the bad guy. Their parents have, like, these little worms in their head. And, you know, like, uh, once the worms come out, like. They're their normal parents again, and they they kind of reunite. And then the show ends very quickly. It just like suddenly ends. Yeah. Um, so it is an ending. It's not like it didn't have an ending, but basically it was like, ooh, where what happened to our characters next after they found their parents? Well, that's up to you because we never made another episode again. Yeah. Um, and they had a big twist at the end too. It was like an M Night Shyamalan twist where they found out that. I and you actually come from Wonderland and they got out and that's where their parents were trying to kind of like bring them back or like find out where they came from. So they left Wonderland as, or no, I think their parents found them in Wonderland and brought them back to the Earth. parents and found them, them in there. Wonderland. Yeah, that's what it was. Brought them was. to Earth. And then those other guys wanted them to come back to Wonderland so that they could then bring omega to them or something yeah they can like they, was... they basically harvest their existence to bring omega um or bring i mean the earl eventually becomes like chaos uh his name is chaos tyrant in the end and he sucks all the power out of them and and that's how his like ultimate being and he turns really scary uh like the, the weird like voice change thing that they do the voice modulator mm-hmm. i thought that was kind of disturbing in this they're like oh I I don't really like any of you guys. Now I'm gonna eat you. It's like, oh god! <laughs> and he just turns into uh, one of the beasts that we saw at the beginning of the show, fighting on Earth and just like laying waste to Earth. Um, so the Earl has become full on chaos tyrant, and it's fucking oh man how they how they get through it. So Mackenzie basically tries to escape because he has the ability to like move his 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 little sword around and he tries to cut himself free and they stop him and they kind of run him through with his own sword and i was like holy shit somebody actually died in this show uh and then you know he's dead but then like somehow uh the magun guy gets loose for a minute and i think it's when the the wolf chick and moogle show up and the wolf chick is one of the parts that I laugh the hardest at too when she's doing her like her wolf voice. <laughs> it's yeah. so ridiculous. Yeah, it's like you guys aren't disturbed by me. It's like she's trying to do her <laughs> her like Gilbert Gottfried impersonation. <laughs> like Hi guys. That's exactly what it is. It's so bad. <laughs> it's a fucking god. <laughs> they, and they run into these fuckers just randomly. Like, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't mean shit. Like, her and then, like, the globby blue guy that's, like, super emo that turned out to be a fucking flower that 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 she left behind. I was like, what is this? Like, 
God, I would have left it behind too. He's he's more depressing than like middle or than like junior high emo music. Like God, it, it's fucking uh, anyway. The, so those guys show up, and this is when Kaze kind of gets free, and uh, Mackenzie sort of it. He doesn't really sacrifice himself because he's pretty much dead. He just like lets. <laughs> he lets Kaze use his soil to destroy the Earl. So he's like, use my soil. And I was laughing really hard at that. And he like sucks him up into this like rainbow uh, fucking soil charge bullet. And that's uh, McKenzie's thing because I guess he was gay the whole time. Uh, perfect timing for today with the pronouns day. Mm-hmm. He And he's got his little rainbow thing. And then fucking... Um, the Moogle just is like, yeah, fuck it. Take my soil too. And I'm still laughing at this. I'm like, God, are they like, they've got like fucking depends on and they're like, use my soil, (laughs) you know? Uh, and so he kind of sacrifices himself. And then at the end, Kaze sacrifices himself and Lisa has to shoot, um, the final, the final Magan shot to kill, um, the chaos tyrant. And, yeah, you're right. It kind of just ends, you know? And then it does imply that they all made it out because the the Comedine's, like, ship, where everyone else was at, like, Sid and all those guys, got, like, fucking nuked. It just got, like, annihilated earlier in the episode, and we have, like, a little scene with those guys, like, during the credits, just pictures of those guys, like, picking up the pieces. And the British guy lived, which I was really happy about. I was going to be pissed if uh, the British sex god died. You know, like the That's only right. one that could ever turn him was uh, was Kaze. You know, he was the only one that yeah. had more sex appeal in this entire show because they either wanted to, they either wanted to bang the the your or the the British guy, they wanted to bang Kaze, or they wanted to be banged, or no, they or the British guy wanted to bang them. It was like one of those three things uh, was going on the entire time. So, I don't know. I kind of liked that last episode. I thought it was interesting to get the twist that they came from there. I don't really know See, that it now, matters. They, I don't know if it's true, though. Do you think it's true? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's a weird idea. Because di- the idea... It didn't and, really, like... I mean, they... I don't think the parents ever, like, confirmed it. Oh, no, they did. Think, there was uh, a part where they're, like, they're not our biological children, but they are our children. After they were, like, what oh, are we doing? Oh, okay. Yeah. I must have missed it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so they were, like, created. But the weird thing is, like, they were created to be consumed by to create chaos in its ultimate form and the idea of chaos is kind of cool in the show too because it's basically just all of the world's um anger and like all the negative emotions basically in the world manifest into chaos so uh that was kind of a cool concept and then that the darkness of chaos sort of consuming all was like the most that was about as deep as this show gets um, cause I was thinking, I was like, what if it means more? And then, and then I was like, no, it really doesn't. It's just all these negative emotions can consume you and anime. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. Uh, so overall thoughts. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's a bad show i think i thought it was a bad show in the first half of the show and then the second half does get better i think someone at one point told us that the show gets better yeah and they were right and we the were show like does get no better. way dude you're full of shit like there's no way this show gets better <laughs> yeah we were assholes so, when we were told that it's not i mean it's got some fun final fantasy stuff in there it has a very similar plot oddly to world of final fantasy um <laughs> Uh, and we'll talk about it once again. We'll talk about that more next week because twice you haven't gotten to some parts. But um, yeah, it's uh, I thought it I thought it was fun. I think at least it's worth watching just to get to the um the frog episode. I think it's it's worth watching for that. Um, animation's kind of not great. Um, I was going to take a still frame yesterday, but I decided I had four hours that I was going to watch it in, so I didn't want to pause ever. Um, but there was like, I think Lisa was like looking up. We had like a high angle looking down on Lisa and her hand was just like, I could have drawn a better hand. It was like fucked up. Yeah. Your hand, like her little hand. 
in the corner was like kind of fucked up. Sometimes the animation's really cheap, is what I'm saying. Um, but you know, as a Final Fantasy fan, there's a lot of Final Fantasy stuff in here, and it it gets it becomes more like Final Fantasy as the show goes on as well, not just like the superficial stuff, but in the storytelling. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd say like uh, I'd give it like a C plus. It was alright. Uh, I don't think it's as good as the other television shows we've watched for the show, but I mean, what like Dad of Light or uh, the Fifteen anime? Dad of Light or Brotherhood? Yeah. Oh, or I mean, it's definitely better than Kingsglaive too. Like, oh, like <laughs> uh, that's yeah, that's a movie though. Like. Uh, yeah, that's true. If I'm just judging against the other two television shows. Although the five one uh, was a TV show movie, wasn't it? Or no, that was a movie. That was a movie. It was a movie that was made from like large multi-episode. It was like a mini series turned into a movie. Okay. It's very confusing. Uh, <laughs> it's very confusing. Yeah, this it's one's... Both. I don't think it's as good as Dad of Light, I guess. Probably not. Um... But I, I do kind of like it at the end. I was like, you know, this isn't too bad. Uh, there are some really fun episodes in there. Some of the characters are cool. I don't really feel like there's much character development, per se, with the with the mains or even with, like, Kaze. Because, I mean, Kaze has well, this Well, the mains weird... are just supposed to be just like I and you. Exactly, yeah. Just like us, right? Just like you and I, right? That's yeah. Uh, but Kaze, I don't <laughs> feel like he really moves forward a whole lot i mean you get the the flashbacks I, from the past and oh man his his girl he does occasionally move you know he does occasionally move he yeah. tells us when he moves uh but his girlfriend at the time had him use her soil which i thought was hilarious because it's like a whisper I thought it was scene. His sister oh really yeah i always thought it was a love interest i don't know if it's i thought it was a love interest until like one of the last couple episodes he said his sister are you serious? You made a, yeah, I'm serious. Oh my god, that must have been one of the I ones that I was wrong. falling asleep through. Uh, <laughs> that's awkward. <laughs> so is he just a vegetable man? Then he has no interest in the, all of the women that are doting on him. He uh, just, he's too serious, man. He's he's got stuff to do, bro. Yeah, he's got soil charges to triple or triple yeah. triad soil charge death to deal. Um, that's right. He ain't got no time for no woman. Exactly. I I don't know. I kind of dug it. I mean, I like the Ma Gun. I think it's a cool thing. I, the only thing I don't like is that almost every time it's just, you know, we create these huge situations and it's like, oh, how are they going to get out? And then the Ma Gun thaws and he kills whatever it is with the Ma Gun and then they move on. It's not, I don't know if it's really not set up beforehand, especially after the first time it happens. It's just weirdly formulaic. Like, Usually when I think of a, a deus ex machina, I think it's supposed to be like the universe hasn't set it up and then they do it anyway and then it really pisses you off. But this one, it just kind of bugs me because they just keep using it, right? It's not like, uh, I don't know, I, 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 you haven't, I guess like a Stephen King thing, he uses that a lot where it's not a rule that's set up beforehand, so it's really fucking cheap and that's why everyone calls him out for not being able to end a book well. It's because half of the time it's a, it's a random like, well, and then he did this, and this is now a thing, and it's like, wow, this is an eight book fucking series, and this is the first time it happens at the end, like really, that's your what you're gonna do, and that's when it bugs me. Um, but this, it's oh, like I- it's a fucking twenty minute anime, so it's just the consistency of it that kind of bothers me. So you're telling me don't read the Dark Tower series? So you're telling me? Uh, no, I think it's still really good. And it's not it's not a Deus Ex Machina at the end of that, um, but there are things that no, there are Deus Ex Machinas in that, but there's kind of a reason. It, it it makes sense in a way. It's weird, it's weird, but it still bothers me, even though I know why, and it makes sense in a nonsensical way. Um, it's fucking bizarre, dude. But uh, it it really bothers me when I when I come across that stuff because it's like it's just it's just cheap, you know what I mean? Like it's just unfair. Like you have this set of rules that we've been obeying for so long, and then you break them. I don't feel like the show really does that too much. No, I think it, it sets up high stakes and gives us a you know gives us a reward with the Maga, and it's like well they were never really in any danger. But because of that, we don't really feel 
like they're moving forward as characters necessarily. Like I and you are basically the same by the end. Um, they get they do accomplish true. their mission, which is a very simple mission to find their parents. So that's kind of nice. The overall plot is we need to find our parents and bring them back to Earth or reunite with them or whatever. And then there's all this other stuff that happens along the way, which is more interesting than that for sure. But um, and I really kind of do like Kaze. I like how indifferent he is um, towards everyone. Although at the same time, I feel like he's a character that doesn't really change a whole lot. In my opinion, like he he kind of remains the same. You know, his mission's always been to take out these guys and basically punish the uh, rescue the weak and punish the evil earl's men that are doing all this crap um i don't know i just i just don't know if it's there's it's 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 odd it's like we we complained about uh rob zombie the other day for like his movies um and the show kind of does some of the same things that we don't like but it's it's oddly not as big of a problem to me. <laughs> like, I, um, I mean, this is a TV show, so each each episode has its own arc, and you might not be looking so much for character change because you have to come to the show every single week. So I don't know. I mean, we watched it in one big chunk, so it's a little different. I do think the characters are kind of flat. I don't know if it has anything to do with character journey per se but i like every time i says anything i want to blow my brains out i but too just be- want to yeah uh you do too i do as you well does- <laughs> you does as well no not you um, i <laughs> <laughs> i would say capital i but that that doesn't help because <laughs> we used to do capital h hope for the 13 yeah. stuff. It doesn't really work when it's, you know. No, oh, then you could be like AI. <laughs> AI? AI. I, AI instead of I, I. Yeah, yeah. AI, not I, I. <laughs> Every time AI opens her voice, I, I get really mad. <laughs> AI starring <laughs> Haley Joe Osman? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, the kid character is kind of flat, and all they're doing is looking for their parents, and then, of course, they find their parents at the end of the day, but it wouldn't be for without all these, like, adult characters. I do find Sid to be, like, a pretty fun character. It's probably why, like, the episode based around him was yeah. the best. Oh, yeah. Um, um, Lisa, I also find to be, like, a pretty good character, so anything that's revolved around her, I thought was pretty good. Um... But yeah, there's. It's definitely not. It's it's far from a perfect show. I think that yeah, the first half of the show I would call like bad television, and then the second half of the show I'd call like decent television. So it just kind of like rounds out in the middle there. It was all right. Yeah. Um, if you're a Final Fantasy fan, it's only 25 episodes and they're really short, so you might as well like have the experience if you have the DVDs somewhere. Although, I think they're getting more and more expensive as time goes on. Um. Maybe it'll come out in streaming. I have no idea. Maybe it is out. I have no idea. I, but, um, I doubt it will or is, to be honest. Yeah. I don't think it did that well, right? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's just kind of... I, I know there's, like, sequels to it in Japanese. There's some sequel books. Yeah, there's um, sequel games, there's too. There's a sequel audio drama. There is also a Final Fantasy game that has never come here in the West that is yeah. based on... Unlimited. There's a mobile one, and I guess a... Uh, I guess there's also like a click adventure thing as well. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. We can't, yeah, we just, we don't have that one. <laughs> and we probably never will. Um, that's okay. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't. I'm okay with that. I don't want to. I don't want to play it, so. Right. And I mean, I guess we wouldn't. No, I don't know. If it was a point a click adventure, that one we would. The mobile game, we never would. So. But it's not here. I'm positive of that. Like, so positive. I haven't looked at it, but I'm positive just because it's like someone would have brought it up. So I was like, what I looked about into the it before. There's like, there's not even like a Wikipedia page for the game. Yeah, I saw that <laughs> when I was looking at it, the stuff earlier for the director. Like, there's no, there's no clickable link, and I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> no bullet <one> cares. dodged. <laughs> 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 I just like Abrax loading that up into his like into his podcast revolver. He's like, what about this? 
the episode yeah. has thawed. <laughs> yeah. I uh yeah. So is there any other any other thoughts you have on it? No, I kind of do love the the Magan stuff, dude. Like by the end, I was really digging it. Are you like, kidding me? Oh, every no. time he would look down, I would just look at Jace, and I'd be like, "It has moved." <laughs> and then like, <laughs> and then Magan, uh, the Magan has thawed, and then I would make the little like <laughs> sound effect too. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's so painfully long, though. Um, I, I think it's kind of fun. I think it's a bit of a grind at times, but honestly, yeah, it's only 25 episodes, probably about 20 minutes each. That's not a long TV show. Um, and if you get the box set, I think I paid, I think I paid like 20 for it used on eBay. So you can find it for cheap. If you're going to find it new, it's going to be really expensive, but it's out there. Um, maybe if they do that Final Fantasy streaming thing they talked about, they'll try to get all the media on there. That would be really cool. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I think that'd be awesome. Square Enix, you listening? Yeah. No, sadly not. <laughs> we spurned them. Uh, but uh, something like that would be awesome, a good way to catch up on it. But I think it's worth a watch, at least. There's at least a, a couple really fun episodes in there. And I kind of like the music overall, except for like the the super anime like outro. I don't even know what the fuck to call it. Like, the one in the first half of the show. It's which the J-pop. Is, yeah, the J-pop. It's just... And then, like, a bunch of, like, stuff. And, like, the lyrics are horrible. Like, if you got the subtitles on, like, it's just God. <laughs> and it, the visuals are offensive. It's... It's, it's rough. <laughs> uh, but overall, I think the music is pretty decent um, for the show as well. And... It looks kind of like shit sometimes. It's really cheap. Like, they'll have the mouth thing that I complained about in a couple of the episodes. They do it all the time where they have a side angle of the person, like a, you know, a person in profile from the side. And, like, it'll have their little drawn-on part where their lips kind of part, but then their lips will be on the side. Like, they won't be connected to that. They'll be more towards the screen, and it's really weird looking if you catch it. And it happens, like, constantly. Um, that and like their chins not lining up with where they should be with their mouths because of the animation. They're like, "Fuck it!" It's like they it's like they made the the figures for South Park and they just said, "Screw it, we're not going to make more than three angles on these characters, and so we'll just move their mouths to imply different camera angles at times." Um, I just remember Lisa's hand. I gotta find that fucking thing. <laughs> There's yeah, I, it's so like. <laughs> like it's so bad. It's like they forgot and they just had to get like the a five year old to finish drawing and they're like, God, <laughs> it looks it so looks shitty, like. but it's only for a second. Do your best hand. <laughs> oh, that's real good, Jimmy. Yeah. Keep practicing. It's like you, you how do you Yeah, some of it sometimes though, it's like, wow, that looks really fucking shitty. Um <laughs> and the weird three D stuff, sometimes it looked cool. Most of the time it just looked kind of disturbing. It's nah, like it's super dated now. Too. Yeah, like everything the summon guys, they have like mega chins, which I thought was weird. Like I, I don't know, there's something about like a really long oh, mechanical too. Yeah, like mechanical long chin, like Jay Leno, but like a a mech Jay Leno with the, the super <laughs> long chin. Yeah. <laughs> the mega <Megan> is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's, some of that's just gross looking, but stuff, some of the animations near the end were actually pretty nice. They were pretty good looking, so it sort of depended, um, but I don't know, for what it is, not bad. I don't think it has as much heart as, obviously, as Dad of Light, which is pretty fucking depressing at the end, um, and still great. It's fucked up that the guy actually died later, too. It's like, wow, man, was that like a fucking like autobiography of what's happening with some Final Fantasy sprinkled in. I don't know, but uh, not a bad show. I don't know. It's fine. Dead of Life, the movie coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. That is that is so strange, but yeah, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they would have kept I'm... Daddy of Light so bad, dude. That's such a great title. Daddy? Yeah. Daddy? Uh Shwai, speaking of your Jay Leno impersonation earlier, you want to do? Uh, I want to hear your impersonation of Quentin Tarantino talking to Jay Leno. <laughs> uh, all right. So, let's see, what would they talk about? Yeah. So, uh, so Quentin, what the? Uh, you know, what kind of movies are you gonna be working on next? Well, uh, Jay. So, next up, we got uh, 
We're gonna we're gonna actually we're gonna actually do a little a little surprise one here. We're gonna do Kill Bill three. So everybody knows we're gonna do a Star Trek movie, right? And that's supposed to be my last movie. Well, I say that one doesn't count, right? So we're gonna do Kill Bill Volume three because no one really cares about Kill Bill Volume one and two, but three it's gonna be amazing. Oh well, you know I really like Kill Bill Volume one and two. Yeah, no, that's okay, Joey. I know you didn't actually like it that much. Uh, it's okay. You don't you there don't you have go. to tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. Uh, all right, man. Um, well, I want to do a quick reminder here, guys, to, uh, if you got, uh, any opinions on World of Final Fantasy, please give them to us on the forums, on the Discord chat, on Twitter. Um, and if you have any final questions for our show, for the finale episode, you got, uh, two weeks. Well, you have until the 29th of October. Yes. So get it by the 28th, is what I mean. Uh, by the by the end of the 28th of October, if you could send us your Final Fantasy stories at our, at our email or your finale questions, uh, our email is f, f- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, our email is fffanatics123 at gmail.com. And you can send us uh, questions or your Final Fantasy story there. And uh, you can use the hashtag UFFQFinal on Twitter. And we have a place in the Discord chat that uh, you can put um, final questions on or idea or thoughts about ranking of the final game, of the final games or anything like that. That, that finale episode that we're going to do is going to be our final ranking episode. We're going to be talking about our final time. And we're just going to be talking about the whole experience of uh, playing through all these Final Fantasy games and all our thoughts uh, about how they all kind of place together, I guess. So it'll be, uh, yeah, it'll be great. But uh, anyway, go go do that. Schweiss, anything else? Um, no, do you want to save the the stories for next time or do you want to do one? What do you want to do? Uh, let's just save it for the finale. Okay, we'll save That's the rest it. of the Final Fantasy It was Fantasy this stories. week and then next week we got a full review. And then uh, the week after, we'll be recording our finale episode. But once again, you guys will get other episodes that we that we'll have preloaded, ready to go. Some special episodes for you. Yeah, heck coming yeah. out in the weeks in between. But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Follow me at Joseph DeGolier. Follow me at UFF Podcast. You can go to our YouTube channel, which we will be updating. Uh, most of it'll just be audio versions of all of the podcasts, so you guys won't need to go there. But if you want to, I mean, you know, one day the feed might just be YouTube. We never know. Uh, yeah, you can go there, youtube.com forward slash Ultima Final Fantasy. You can follow us on Twitch. I don't think you've streamed anything, plus we're done with the games, but we we should probably get back into streaming. Um, it's <laughs> twitch.tv slash Ultima Final Fantasy. You can support the show. My, my place is just not... It's just not set up for streaming, guys. Yeah, it's just it's my tough. living situation. I don't know if I bitched about my roommate enough, but yeah, it's tough for me too. It. I mean, with the kids and you know the baby, it's there's a lot of me putting it the controller down for minutes at a time, and it's just not good. It's not yeah. good. Uh, I can't entertain adults and a six month old at the same time. <laughs> um, That's fair. So you can follow us there, though. We're, I want to try to get back into it again. I don't know. I always, I always fucking say this on all of the shows, except for the Game of Thrones show. I don't ever say it there, but I want to get back into it. So you can follow us there. Um, you can support us on Patreon if you'd like. Uh, it's patreon.com forward slash Ultima Final Fantasy. I know the weekly's coming to an end, but if you want to chip a few bucks here and there, you can do it there, or you can just do a direct PayPal donation on our site that exists for now. <laughs> UltimaFinalFantasy.com. Yeah. Um, we'll be getting rid of that site at the end of the year. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Not a whole lot of people use it. Yeah. Um, and we don't. And we'll keep the Discord up with Nude Clan, and there'll be an Ultima Final Fantasy area in the Discord chat. Exactly. So for, if you uh, want to do the forum stuff, Discord is really the future. I think those kind of formats. That's that's like that's like a more advanced form of Twitter. It's like Twitter for everybody kind of a thing. It's, it's a really good social media tool and it's so much better than the website. It's yeah. Um, it's Twitter slash forum for people who want to be there specifically for that thing. Exactly. Yeah. So. And it's, it's, it's really great. So please join the discord. You can find that on 
it's a pinned tweet at my Twitter handle at UFF Podcast. Um, join there, join the conversation. There's a lot of great, a lot of great talk that goes on in that in that channel. A lot of great people hanging out. So, um, yeah, you can do that. Um, and of course, leave us your reviews. We'll read them on the show. Even even going forward, we'll read them on our review episodes that we have. I mean, yep. I know we don't normally do that, but if there's a big piece of news, or if there's like a, uh, you know, a review, we'll do it on the reviews. It's not going to be like the reviews up to this point because we always have the other episodes with time to put those segments in. Um, the things that we will do will still be part of the show um, when it's just reviews. So, excuse me, don't uh, don't worry about not reviewing it or whatever because we're not going to read it um still still give us those and let us know what you think um yeah i think that's uh, i think that's it okay we'll see you next time till then enjoy the grind all right guys so we asked the audience on twitter what they thought of final fantasy unlimited and if they had any questions for us. No questions, apparently, but Skull Hades says, from the commentaries I've seen you guys do on Twitch oh so long ago, it looks pretty fucking terrible. Rob S., I remember watching the show in college. It wasn't horrible, but I would love to see a much better version of an FF show someday. Well, there are other FF shows, so. Angry-ass black dude, I feel for you. That show is fucking painful. At least 25% of the show is the gun asshole loading his gun and using his special move. Well, thanks for your thoughts, guys. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Stay tuned. Next week, we're going to be reviewing World of Final Fantasy. And then following that, we'll have a special surprise and then our final rankings episode for all of the mainline series. Spinoffs, prequels, sequels, um, and Chocobo games. Uh, So thank you guys so much for hanging out with us this week. And until next time, enjoy the grind again. Alright guys, so I mentioned on the show that I watched most of this uh, Final Fantasy Unlimited with my boy, Jace here, and just want to get his uh, thoughts on the show. So Jace, what did you think about the show we've been watching? Like, um, the shows I have thought about that we were watching is, uh, what's the name again? What, Kaze? Yeah, I thought about Kaze's super awesome white wind, a white cloud. He's, I don't know why he changed up to a good guy when he has a bad guy. That's crazy. And though I can't believe they found their mom and dad and that they got mind control and then something was in their dad's ear for some reason and uh it has been really weird that that happened and uh uh, the girls that was in there is uh there's two girls and that's crazy (laughs) okay well what did you think about the episode where the one guy turned into a frog did you like that one yeah, I liked the episode that the guy turned into a frog. It was really funny. Okay, uh, any other final thoughts on it? Like, did you like the music? Did you like the chocobos? What do you think? I like the chocobos. 
All right. Well, thank you for your thank you for your time. Now can I go back out to play? Yeah, you can go out to play again. <laughs>